important data. We digress to Washington and we digress to one of the most interesting Congress people of this nation. Warren Davidson is from the Republican Center of Ohio. That would be in the vicinity of Dayton if I get my map correctly. We won't ask him Indians or Reds, but we will ask him about his expertise in crypto. We will ask him about the moment, but we must begin with our military. Warren Davidson is one of the great, great stories of the military in our Congress. He was a soldier in Germany and had the privilege to wander to West Point. And we're thrilled that Warren Davidson could join us uh, today. Soldier Davidson, I want to talk to you right now about these reports we hear of politics in our military, whether it's far right, far left, center, or all. How does Washington manage the personal politics of our military? Well, it's certainly different. You know, when I was in, uh, Bill Clinton wasn't popular at the military academy. People uh, were shocked when he defeated George W. Bush there. Uh, the place is a little insulated from day-to-day -day politics, or at least it was at that time, you know, pre-internet era. Uh, today, you know, the Biden administration started out with kind of a 60-day stand down uh, to review boards and anything with a, with a nominee. Uh, I'm on the board of advisors for the United States Military Academy. And we had to take a pause in our action right. uh, as a board. It's been a huge deal at Colorado Springs as well. What do you need to see from Republican and Democrat leadership to, to take this polarity, this polarization out of our military? Yeah, I think, you know, just keep a mission focus. I mean, when, uh, you know, really the politicians are the ones that tend to politicize the military. The soldiers just want a mission and the resources to accomplish it. Uh, I'm sure that's the, true today as I go out and talk with folks, uh, you know, here at the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base right near here, uh, the National Guard, Springfield Air National Guard and units deployed around the country. They just want a mission uh, and the resources to do it and not all the political distractions. It seems like everything has been politicized right now, including retail trading. GameStop became politicized in the past 12 months <clears throat> as people bid up the price dramatically as a result of Reddit boards. You're holding a hearing on that 12 p.m. Eastern today. There has been some discussion about shortening the trade settlement times to uh, withdraw any potential risk to Robin Hood, like what we saw. Are you for that? Do you foresee that in the near future? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was encouraging initially. I mean, uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez agreed uh, with the same position I had and, and Ted Cruz had initially, which is, you know, more democratic access to capital makes our country stronger. I mean, we have the best capital markets in the world, but we do have a chance to improve them. Uh, we are facing dynamic times, as you see. Reddit threads, for example, in this GameStop case, uh, have an impact similar to uh, something that could rival a Bloomberg terminal. So speech on a Bloomberg terminal really shouldn't be treated differently than speech uh, on a Reddit thread. Uh, I think we have structural opportunities to improve trading to get to T0. All right, Bloomberg as Reddit. I will say, though, there is a question also about how Bitcoin, how Dogecoin, as my children ask me about on a daily basis, by the way, because it is from Roblox, it's like life imitates art and vice versa. There is a question of where the regulatory side fits into this, of why we haven't come up with a regulatory framework soon enough. What are you thinking on that front? Well, SEC Chairman Gensler is going to be before us today. I had the opportunity to speak with him uh, when Facebook uh, was talking about Libra. And at the time, you know, he felt the SEC wasn't doing enough to give regulatory clarity to the market. I look forward to his answers on a range of topics. It's going to be his first appearance before the House Financial Services Committee. And, you know, frankly, I'm optimistic that he'll agree we need some sort of light touch regulatory clarity for this space to continue to flourish. I was also encouraged by Janet Yellen's comments recently and, frankly, by the Federal Reserve's uh, openness to uh, allowing fintech companies access to the Fed payment system. Congressman Davidson, can Chairman Gensler take a middle ground in the polarity, the hopes of the liberals? Do you suspect that Gensler, as a wizened Wall Street veteran, will find a middle ground? Yeah, and I think, look, uh, a bright line test for, for digital assets is a nonpartisan issue. My Token Taxonomy Act is completely balanced with Republican and Democrat sponsors. We started working on this in really 2017, got the draft language in 2018. Uh, and as one of the attendees at the uh, at the meeting we put together on it, people from the you know the the community in crypto, but also big companies uh, like like Fidelity and State Street, market participants participants like Andreessen Horowitz, uh, and the New York Stock Exchange were in this dialogue. 
And it really was, it's not a partisan issue, it's just really whether you understand the space or not. So I'm confident Gensler will understand it and he'll be able to uh, help move us forward. I look forward to his input to, in today's hearing. Uh, Congressman, before we let you go, we would like your response to the news in a moment down in Washington, D.C. that the administration is supporting potentially waiving IP protection on COVID-19 vaccines, many of which were developed in this country and in Europe as well. What's your position on that, sir? Yeah, I think it's always dangerous when the federal government des decides to retroactively uh, waive things like intellectual property. How do you justly compensate someone for this? But I think, look, uh, the, the company's benefited from a massive amount of U.S. dollar investment. And I think there's a, an equitable way to resolve this that, that really does deal with the public health crisis. Uh, you know, we've seen a lot of fighting between which administration should get credit for what on warp speed. But well, the reality is it wasn't a partisan issue. It moved through Congress as well. It passed. I don't think anyone really objected to that provision at all. Uh, and, and to the overall package, it was less than a dozen who objected to the initial uh, funding that made warp speed possible. So some of these dollars are U.S. taxpayer dollars. So I think there's a clear claim that some of the intellectual property needs to be able to um, be managed in a way that really benefits not just America, but uh, public health broadly. A complicated view, a nuanced view. Oh, Congressman. Yeah. Appreciate Not a good time, time for nuance, but it is, it is an important topic. I think it's dangerous to change uh, all of IP law the way the president had proposed it, though. Well, we appreciate the balanced view you're offering this morning, sir. Congressman Warren Davidson there. On the debate at the moment, Tom Keane down.